Hello, this is Lonnie with Rolling O Farm. Today we're going to talk about the number one problem that most people who raise goats and sheep have, and that is with parasites, particularly internal parasites such as stomach worms. Now today is the first week in May here in Alabama. We have warm temperatures, high humidity, we've had good spring rains, the grass is really growing. All of that's the perfect environment for all of those worm eggs that have been laying dormant through the winter months to hatch out and be ingested by the goats or sheep. So what I start doing is the first few weeks after the spring green up, every few weeks, every two to three weeks, I'll bring my herds and flocks in and do a visual inspection to see if I'm having any problem with worms. Today I've got a flock of sheep that I'm going to bring in and I'd like to show you how you can tell if you're having a problem with internal parasites such as stomach worms. Come along. So sometimes you can visually inspect an animal even out in the field and get some idea if it needs to be checked more closely for worms. There are three symptoms that uh, we can look at when we see an animal in the field that give us some indication that maybe we need to check it more closely. The first is if it just doesn't have much energy. If you see a herd or a flock moving across the pasture and you notice an animal lagging behind, always pay attention to those animals that are at the back of the pack. Uh, something may be wrong with them. Why are they dragging behind? Particularly if you see an animal and it's got its head down, its ears are droopy, it just doesn't look like it has much energy at all. Now, that can be a symptom of any number of things, that it, it has some other sickness, that it just doesn't feel well, that it's older or moving slow. There can be any number of problems there. But par parasites can be one of the things that cause an animal to be off or to be uh, have a lack of energy and look kind of droopy. The second symptom that I look for in the field is scours. In other words, diarrhea, a dirty butt. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have parasites. Scours can be caused by any number of things. This time of year, a lot of goats and sheep get scours just because the grass and the clover is coming out and they're getting that very rich change in diet, which is causing a little digestive problem for them and they'll develop scours or diarrhea. But can also indicate some other problem going on. Anything from a viral infection to coccidiosis or to internal parasites such as worms. So if we see an animal that has scours, we do want to observe it more closely and see what's going on with it. The third telltale sign, which is really obvious, is bottle jaw. If you see an animal that has a swollen chin or jaw, you know that it is anemic. And most likely that anemia is caused by internal parasites such as stomach worms. If you see that, that animal is probably heavily infested and needs to be treated immediately. You don't have a few days to, to, to wait around. You need to treat that animal right away and try to kill those worms and also build up that hemoglobin level and, and, and remedy that anemia before that animal dies. So those are three symptoms that sometimes we can look at an animal in the field and say, all right, I need to check that animal more closely. It might have a problem there. Now, one way to be certain whether or not worms are causing the problem is to do a fecal sample. A fecal sample is where you collect some of the, the poop of the animal, you take it to a vet, uh, they can look at it underneath a microscope and they'll do an egg count, a worm egg count in the fecal material and they can tell you how heavy of a load of parasites that animal has. Uh, I've done this several times and my experience has been that unless a vet is very experienced with goats and sheep and kind of know how the animal reacts to parasites, generally you'll get a report back that says, yes, needs to be dewormed, which is not very helpful because uh, nearly all goats and sheep have worms and therefore they're going to have uh, worm eggs in the fecal sample. That doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be dewormed. Uh, what we're looking for is we're trying to identify animals that have a heavy worm load that need to be treated. And so there is a quicker, less expensive, and in my opinion, probably a more reliable test of being able to determine whether or not your animal has a heavy worm infestation and needs to be treated. And that's what we're going to talk about today.
So probably the easiest way to monitor whether or not your animals may have a heavy worm load is by looking at the inside of their eyelid. What happens when a goat or a sheep has a high level of stomach worms, those stomach worms have attached themselves to the lining of the digestive tract of that animal and are sucking the blood out of that animal. When there's enough of them, they can cause that animal to become anemic. In other words, it just doesn't have enough red blood cells. And you can visually see that in the membrane on the inside of the eyelid. As a matter of fact, if you look in your bathroom mirror and pull down your eyelid and look on the inside of your eyelid, it should be a nice dark red. And what we're looking for in goats and sheep is similar to that. We want to see a nice dark red color. That means there's lots of red blood cells flowing through those little capillaries that are visible there in the membrane of that eyelid. If you pull down that eyelid and it's a light pink or maybe even a pale or even white, then we know that there's probably a lot of parasites sucking the red blood cells out of that animal. There's a whole scoring system that has been developed to monitor this. It's called the FAMACHA scoring system. And you can Google that and look that up. There's lots of, um, there, there's lots of resources available for that. They even have a little scorecard that you can hold up next to the eyelid as you're checking them and kind of see where your animal ranks on that scoring system. But what we're looking for is we're looking for a nice dark red or a bright pink. If, that, uh, if the color of that eyelid gets where it's a light pink or a pale uh, pink or even a white, then that animal needs to be treated because it's anemic. So let's look and see how we do this. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm just wanting to catch the animal, hold its head, and of course it's going to fight. Pull down the eyelid. Pull down the eyelid and check on the inside. So that one's just a little bit pale. Not too bad, but a little bit pale. Compare that one with this one. You can see how dark red that is. That's what it's supposed to look like. This one's a little bit pale, probably needs a little dose of worming. A tip for doing this is uh, you want to try to have good lighting. If you have uh, the sun shining where you can use the sun, that's good. If you check one eye and it's questionable, be sure to check the other and make your choice based upon the lighter colored eye. So when I'm checking, if I have to make a decision I, and, and one's kind of iffy, I'm always going to err on the side of caution, particularly with lambs and with those who are pregnant and those who are nursing or older. Because what you have with them is you have, they're more susceptible. Their immune systems are either not as developed as much or they have additional strain on their systems. <laughs> This one's borderline, but I'm gonna go ahead and do her anyway. So the first step to controlling worms in goats and sheep is just really regular monitoring them, making sure that you're not having a problem. Because sometimes if you don't inspect them 
every couple of weeks, particularly during the summertime, what ends up happening is they get too far gone, then you've got a real problem. But you can stay ahead of it if every few weeks during the warmer months, you'll just go through, check their eyelids, doesn't take long to do. You see a problem, go ahead and take care of that. Don't let it get out of control. You may be wondering, well, what do I need to do if I find an animal that needs to be dewormed? What dewormer do I need to use? How much do I need to give? Lord willing, I hope to deal with that in a future video. I really intend this to be a three-part series dealing with control of internal parasites. You may also be wondering, well, why don't you just worm, deworm all of them at the same time and get it over with? I'll deal with that in the future video on management practices for controlling internal parasites. If you're looking for more in-depth information, there is a website that I've gone to many times. It's very helpful. It's www.wormx.info. And they have a lot of helpful articles and information in dealing with controlling internal parasites such as stomach worms. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for the future videos. And if you're within driving distance of Northwest Alabama and you're looking for a starter herd or flock of sheep or need additional breeding stock for what you already have, give me a call, see what I have available at the time. As always, I appreciate you watching the video and happy farming.